Good morning, Grace Point. Hope you are enjoying this rainy, cool Sunday morning. We are glad to be with you again in week six. We are starting week six of this social distancing, uh, stay at home, quarantine. But the good thing is, is you get to be the church in your home, in your PJ, sweatpants, whatever it is. And so welcome. Glad to have you with us today as we continue uh, to worship in this digital format. And so as we are in this season of craziness and uh, virus and so forth, uh, we really want you to tell us uh, that you're worshiping with us, that you're joining us. So feel free to go online right now and to uh, click our uh, live feed and let us know that you're watching. And so tell us who you're watching with. Give us, give me a high five because I'm a toucher. I like to high five people. I like to hug people and you can't really do that today. So give me a high five or something like that. Let me know you're out there. But we got some questions for you today. I want you to kind of think about, all right, I know we're six weeks in. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, maybe you have done everything creatively you can do. And now as you've resolved, I'm just going to binge watch. <laughs> maybe you have resolved that Netflix and Hulu are the best invention since sliced bread. Uh, I don't know what it is uh, about it, but sometimes you get into watching a show and it just, you got to keep watching. So my question to you today is what is your binge watching? What are you watching right now? What have you watched this, this, uh, this uh, COVID season? Maybe you've watched The Crown three or four times through. Our family has. I know that's one of our favorites. Maybe you're a little bit on the dark side and you like Ozark. I don't know. Uh, if, that, if that's your jam, then let us know. What is your binge watching? Maybe you're into the Tiger King. Hello, all you cool cats and kittens. Maybe that's your thing. So let us know what it is that you are binge watching. We're glad to have. Uh, we're glad to have Sean Smith. Hello, Sean and, uh, and and Eric. Glad to have Jared uh, joining us. Jared Marley and Dina. See you there. Jay Hill, Ricky. Glad to have all of you jumping in and being a part of our worship time together today. Angela Reynolds, good to see you as well. Hope you and the family are enjoying this, uh, this time together as making the best of it. You know, when you think about binge watching, binge watching is only good if you got something that you can binge eat on. So I have had the hardest time in this season. I'm a therapy eater. Some people are therapy shoppers. I'm a therapy eater. So I have been therapying myself or uh, giving myself the freedom to eat probably more and things that I don't shouldn't be eating all the time. So another question for you today, what has been your go-to therapy food? Take an emoji, go over in your emojis and tell us in an emoji. Now, I looked this morning for potato chips. I couldn't find them. So if you put a potato in your, in your comments section right now, then we will know that potato chips, salties is your, is your way. Maybe it's sweet. Maybe it's pie. That's definitely one of mine. So what is it that you are uh, eating and enjoying and feasting on? I see, uh, I see uh, Anna likes uh, um, Amazing Race. I see Mickey Mouse Club. Now, those of you who have Disney Plus probably are all into that, okay? All of my kids are past that. The crown, I see that. Yeah, Christy, I see you're, you're a crown person. Scott, Kennedy, also uh, Mickey Mouse. I'm glad to see that you and your wife are watching the same thing together uh, as, as you go along. Troll Hunters, that's one I haven't seen. I need to look into that. So what is it that you are binge watching? What is it that is your therapy food? Put that in an emoji, okay? Let us know what is your therapy food. <laughs> Bob, pizza. Can never go wrong with pizza, all right? And we're not even asking you what kind you like. You can put fish on it or not. Uh, but anyway, we want you to know that we are in this together. The whole world is in this together. But we're hoping in this season of disruption that we can help you thrive and not just survive. It is not just survival mode. It is how can I 
thrive. And so we started this series of messages last week. It's going to last into May that uh, we have planned out, prayed through, and, and just really seeking God to help us in seasons of disruption. And so we looked at uh, last week, hopelessness, that we can find hope in hopelessness. Today, uh, have a great opportunity to deal with disruption again. We said disruption is an interruption to our assumptions. We think it's going this way and all of a sudden it goes this way. Life gets hijacked, schedules get hijacked, school gets hijacked, life gets hijacked. And how do you survive? No, how do you thrive? in this season of disruption. And man, I am so, so pumped to have Devin Arnando teaching us today and how to deal with loneliness. And he really kind of brings it to us, looking at lots of different scriptures. So get a pencil and paper out and be sure and let us know what it is that for you uh, is you're, you're struggling with in this season because we also want to connect with you. We have pastors. Not only Devin is an incredible pastor and who's just joined our team back in January, but we have an a, a incredible pastoral team that wants to pray with, walk with, counsel, do life as best we can in this social distancing day. And so the way we want to do that is we want you to connect with us digitally. We have a digital connect card. If you will text GPC connect to 97000, that's 97000 and put in the comment section, GPC connect. We are going to ha start a conversation with you and you start a conversation with us. How can we pray for you? How can we walk with you in this season? Maybe it's loneliness that you're dealing with. Maybe it's hopelessness that you're dealing with. We've all been disrupted. How can we do this together? So we've got people uh, binge watching Big Bang Theory. Uh, we got people uh, diving into lots of chocolate. Chocolate's always a good therapy. So listen, today is a day where we continue to worship together. In this awkward state, in this incredibly uh, disruptive state, let's find hope and let's find connection uh, in this. Let's not walk through this life in a lonely state. Uh, let's connect together, but let's right now connect with our Father in worship so you continue to worship with us. If you're in a kitchen, uh, sing along with us, uh, hear the words, because we're here to sing together and lift up praise to Jesus, and he's worth it. So let's do this together. I once was captive by the enemy. He had me thinking I was out of reach. Oh, Jesus, mercy shut his mouth. I once was crippled by the weight of shame. Embarrassed, I couldn't even show my face. Oh, Jesus, then I heard you speak. Your love, it comes with no condition. You give us your whole heart. My hope is in the blood of Jesus. I know who I am because of who you are. Tell me the grace is taking care of it. Oh, Jesus, you're my victory. See it again. Oh, Jesus, you're 
for Jesus. I don't know what will. Maybe this next song will. Man, it is so, such a pleasure every single week. Um, and it has been when we met in person, when we were meeting in person, and, and now when we're meeting digitally. I, I don't care. It's, it's a privilege to sing to Jesus. And uh, to know that we're all doing that Grace Point Church is doing this all over our area and all over like some different states and things, but believers all over our world are praising Jesus at more at the same time, more than usual, and I think that's amazing. And I just want us to carry that on as a church body and know that this time is so important and man, it is such a pleasure to sing to Jesus with my musicians and Ellie. Um, and our guys here in the back and uh, every single person that's watching this stream. But today I want our prayer to be and to move into something specific. We have a new song that we're gonna sing as a church and it has such a simple, simple message. But I think it's one that no matter if you've been a believer and attending church for 40 years or um, you just heard the name of Jesus 40 seconds ago because you happened to click into the stream, but. I don't care where you're at. We all need 
the spirit that lives in us to move in us and, and to continually tear down the wall and the barrier that our flawed, sinful hearts want to build up between us and the holy word of God. This song simply says, come tear down the walls that I build up. Every wall, every single wall that I build up because you deserve every piece of my heart. And that's what we get to sing and that's the mindset that we gotta stay in. So let's sing this together as a body of believers and let's pray this to God. So you can sit and you can listen, you can sit and sing, whatever it is. Hold on to someone close to you or if you're by yourself, hold on to the Holy Spirit and Jesus who sits right next to us regardless. And let's sing this together. Come, tear down the walls I built up. Every wall I built up. Every wall I built up. You deserve every piece of my heart. Every piece of my heart. Every piece of my heart Lord, I am trusting that you are a faithful father And all that you have, it is good You're a generous giver Your love's like no other Won't you come and break through to me Over and over Closer and closer, you're drawing me in as the depths of my heart lay before you. in that just for a minute at home and wherever you are come tear down the walls I want you to pray that that prayer right now and just 
rest in that message. You can close your eyes, you can open your eyes, you can uh, do whatever you're, you're doing is fine, but rest in that message, rest in that prayer of over and over and over again. We're bringing our hearts to God and we're laying them before him because we know they are safe with him. They're not safe with other things in this world, but they are safe with our God who is constant. Thank you for the peace of knowing Jesus. God, I pray for our hearts, that they are ready and that they are soft, and our minds, that they are ready to celebrate our church's local giving efforts that we're going to get to celebrate here in a minute. I pray that our hearts and our minds are ready to hear from your holy word. Even through a video, God, it's holy and powerful and means something. I pray our hearts are ready for them, God. And as we hit the end of this worship time together today, God, I pray that we are moving forward and that we know the strength of your gospel and that even if we have accepted it at one point in time, it is alive and is moving the same now as it was then. I pray, God, that as we say amen, and as we click the little X to get out of this video, that that act pushes us forward and that we are inspired and passionate to reach people for your name's sake because you've put the people here and God pray that we're empowered to and excited to do it it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray this amen Hey, listen, there are churches around the world doing some very creative and unique things during a time like this. And it's not a competition by any means, but it is just clear that one of the things that makes this Grace Point family so unique is the willingness of our people to give, to respond to need, to give generously, to give consistently, to give willingly, to give obediently, to give faithfully. And so this morning, we want to say thank you because your giving is making a difference right here in Northwest Arkansas, and your giving is still making a difference around the world where we are partnering with strategic people to share the gospel in very hard, hard places. We recently helped a young woman that you're giving supports on the mission field to get back to the States. She just needed to be back right now during this time. You can imagine there's some things going on in different countries in her specific organization said, hey, why don't you get back? Let's hit the reset button. So we got her back to the States because of your giving that supports her on a regular basis. Your giving has supported medical workers just out of a bit of encouragement. Your giving has provided food for the homeless, pastoral care for those who are hurting. Um, it's allowed us to collectively gather through some really creative avenues for families, like we're doing right now, for children and the content that they're receiving, and for our students who are creatively using Instagram as a ministry. Instagram, it's awesome. If your student, sixth grade, uh, sorry, seventh grade through senior high, hasn't connected to our student ministry on Instagram, man, get them connected because it's fun, it's interactive, and it's encouraging. We are continuing to see God do some awesome things right now. But one of the things that we have seen is that we've put some initiatives out there before you guys, and you've responded to them. And so we have another initiative that we want to say, hey, Grace Point has a reputation in the community, and so we've been asked to do this. We committed to it knowing that our church family would respond. And so here's the details. Every week there are social workers who provide 1,000 snack packs to under-resourced families and their children. And so Grace Point adopted one week. In one week, the social workers in the Bentonville School District are going to distribute 1,000 of these snack packs. And so since we adopted that week, we are turning to now our church family to say, do you guys want to help? Do you want to get your children involved? Do you want to get your friends involved? Does your family want to pack 
20 bags, 30 bags, 40 bags, one bag? I, does your family want to, to just give additional money to the, the ministry budget to go towards this? However you guys feel like God is leading you to be a part of this, man, it's on you. We'd love for you to be a part. But the contents are going to be listed in our social medias. We'll blast that with them um, online. But real quick, let me just kind of tell you as your children are there sitting with you or maybe you're sitting there going, what's a snack pack? What are they doing? Foods that children can probably prepare on their own if mom and dad aren't home. A couple of mac and cheese that are microwavable. A couple of soups that are, again, microwavable, um, so not canned goods. And then um, a couple of individual cereals would be good. A granola bar, a Pop-Tart, probably my favorite, a beef jerky, a microwavable popcorn, and a bottle of water. That's it, that's a snack pack. Put it in a Walmart bag, tie it up. You can drop it off at the church between right now and the end of day Wednesday. We are getting these to the social workers in Bentonville Thursday morning. So the drop off table is out front at our main entrance. You can't miss it, there'll be signage there. And we know that you guys are gonna respond. Uh, my family's gonna be a part, the staff family's gonna be a part of this. We are excited that the community turns to Grace Point in times of need and says, we know you guys have been able to help in the past. Can you please help with this? One more thing that your giving is helping. Again, just a bit of encouragement. There's a couple of nursing homes in Bella Vista that we're partnering with this coming week to provide food for their staff. So at the end of their shift, they're gonna have some food to take home and it's just gonna be an encouraging thing for them and your giving is supporting that. Along with that, they're just gonna receive a basic gift, an encouraging note, and part of that gift will be hand lotion. It's so interesting, the basic needs that provide hope right now during this time. If you are working in the medical field or you're still working somewhere that has a new policy that says, we need you to wash your hands all the time. Maybe like my son, who is being asked to wash his hands constantly. His hands are like blood red, they're dried out. This is just, I didn't even think that this would happen. And a real need is for some of these workers to just have some hand lotion to, to just kind of um, re-moisturize their hands. So these nursing home staff in Bella Vista that part of your giving is gonna support for them to get a meal, we're gonna give them some hand lotion and just an encouraging note as a bit of hope to say, we care, God loves you, and uh, the church wants to support you. So you guys keep on giving, stay faithful during this time, be hopeful in the midst of disruption. Uh, my brother Devin is gonna bring the message this morning and talk about disruption. And so we love you guys and we'll see you soon. Hey, what is up, Grace Point Church? Wherever you find yourself watching from, whenever you find yourself watching, my name is Devin Arredondo, and I'm one of the student pastors at Grace Point. It is weird to talk to you in this way, to have this digital wall between us, but we're gathering together in this digital format in the week after Easter, and I know that if God's Spirit can conquer a grave, He can move in our hearts today. So... Right now, put it in the comments. If he can move the tomb, he can move my room. If he can move the tomb, he can move my room. And if you want, maybe throw some praise hands in there because that's one of the fun parts of this digital format, right? But I believe that today. And I've been praying that over us. I've been praying that over our church because I don't know about you, but I need a move of God in my ordinary rooms of living. We're in a series called Disruption, and today we're going to talk about how we can still find God's love in loneliness. We can still find community even in the midst of this mandated social distancing. It's what we do with our loneliness that will determine how we find love in it. So I'm going to pray for us, and as I do, would you say a simple prayer with me wherever you are today? Simply, Jesus, meet me here. Let's pray. Jesus, would you meet us here today, wherever we find ourselves, whatever time we find ourselves in, whatever storms we find ourselves surrounded by right now. Jesus, meet us here in the midst of our ordinary life. God, we come to you today knowing that you can do all things. God, give us your ears as we open up your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. So do you prefer time alone? Or would you rather be around people all of the time? Or maybe let's use the labels that we so often use. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? 
Or maybe the one that we don't really talk about as much that is just as important, maybe an ambivert, meaning you need both, which I think is all of us. But I'm an extrovert, and I love being around people. So as you can imagine, social distancing for me, it's going really, really well. Not. Now, I, I am social distancing, but it has been a struggle. I'm sorry if you're a grandparent out there, but for me, social distancing has kind of reminded me of my younger years where I'm on like this weird holiday break and I've gone to see my grandparents who live really far away from everybody else. And I'm just kind of trapped inside with them and my family forever, right? So Mike kicked off a series last week called Disruption. And man, you want to talk about disruption? Whew, I feel it. Most of my normal rhythms have been turned on their heads and it's almost like I've been forced into this unplanned wilderness, these lonely places. And there have been times when it has been so challenging for me, where I wish I could just go to dinner with a group of people again or to greet someone with a hug again. How many of you, like me, have experienced some version of loneliness in the middle of this season? If you want... I encourage you to throw a hand in the comment, maybe a wave or an all caps, yes, if that's you, because I think it will be helpful for us all to see that we're not alone in this feeling of loneliness. I've wrestled with it a ton, but I know there is good news. I know that just like Jesus disrupted the grave and rose again, Jesus can disrupt and interrupt our feelings of isolation and bring beauty and connectivity to each and every one of us. And so this season is fascinating to me as an extrovert, because most of my adult life, I've actually been surrounded by introverts as my close friends, people who it's difficult to get out to do anything. They're always tired from being around too many people. They would rather sit at home and have a night at home than go out and do anything else. And I've never fully understood it. But now the world has shifted from an extrovert ideal to this introvert ideal, and it is exhausting for me. Introverts, I am so sorry you are always having to put up with us extroverts in our extroverted world. But it's also really cool to me because I've noticed something. Now we're learning to empathize with each other in ways that we maybe have never been able to before. Extroverts like me. We're learning how exhausting it is to live in an introverted world. And introverts are now, they're all craving human interaction like never before. It's this balance. And I think we can learn so much from this time and from who Jesus was and is. Cigna did a recent survey where they surveyed more than 20,000 U.S. adults ages 18 or older and the findings to me are so alarming. Nearly half of Americans reported sometimes or always feeling alone. 47% felt left out. One in four Americans rarely or never feel as though there are people in their life who really understand them. Two in five Americans sometimes or always feel that their relationships are not meaningful, that they are isolated from others. One in five people report that they rarely or never feel close to anyone. Man, so we have all experienced loneliness. And I think we're especially sensitive to it right now in this season. There's a ton of research out there that shows us that the more digitally connected or digitally driven we are, the less actual connection we truly feel. And life is so full of noise. And sometimes we just want to escape it, right? So what do we do? Introverts and extroverts, we may have different ways of doing so, but the solution is the same. We want to drown out the noise. We just want to mask it by drowning it out with any distraction that we can. And I don't know about you, but in this season, I am discovering that even when all of my unhealthy escapes have been stripped away, there's no entertainment, there's no groups of people to interact with, there's no concerts to go to, there's no sporting events on, right? There's no in-person game nights, nothing. And yet, there is a noise that is left in my heart. 
a noise that I'm forced to deal with head on, that I can't escape, that I can't shut it out, this noise of loneliness. So how can we overcome our fear and feeling of isolation, our fear of loneliness, even in this mandated distancing? Well, as I said earlier, it's all about what we do with our loneliness that will determine how we find love in it. And first, we have to look for truth in loneliness. We have to look for truth in loneliness. You see, so often my assumption is that loneliness is bad and no one should have to experience it. But the disruption is that God can and will use loneliness to redirect us to a greater good. Anyone and everyone at some point have felt alone. You can feel alone in singleness, you can feel alone in marriage, you can feel alone when you've got kids, you can feel alone when your kids have grown. Loneliness is that warning signal for something that's deep within us, for something that's gone wrong deep within us. See, aloneness isn't just important to our God, it's actually central to his design for our relationships with each other and with him. We are created for connection, we're wired for it. Loneliness isn't simply a result of personal choices or the world's groaning under sin. It's a reality. And when we look at the life of Jesus, loneliness was an ever-present reality. In Isaiah 53, it says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, it says, He was without sin in a sinful world. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted just as we are, yet is without sin. And that sounds great for us, which it is, but think of it from Jesus' perspective. He was a sinless person living with sinful parents, sinful siblings, sinful extended relatives, sinful neighbors. No one on earth could have actually identified with Jesus. I think it's safe to say that Jesus experienced feelings of loneliness. But what I found interesting as I study this is that Jesus didn't run from the feeling of loneliness. He actually leaned into it. In Luke's account of the gospel, Jesus is in the middle of ministry. And we get what seems like a strange statement from Luke. In chapter 5, verses 15 through 16, Luke writes this. Yet as the news about Jesus spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sickness... And this is the verse I want to focus on. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. The word here for lonely places in the Greek is eremos. It can be translated in multiple ways, but all with a common theme. Wilderness, desert, deserted places, quiet places, lonely place. And if that doesn't sound like COVID-19, I don't know what does. But these lonely places, wilderness, they're woven all throughout the story of the Bible. But for Jesus, lonely places, wilderness times, they were actually needed opportunities to look for the truth in the midst of loneliness. Because again, loneliness is a cry from deep within that something isn't right, that something is out of line. Loneliness is an indicator that something is missing and that thing that missing is only found in a relationship with the Father. You see, Jesus knew that loneliness is real, but Jesus also knew the truth, that loneliness isn't an indication that you're inadequate. It's an invitation from your heavenly Father to connect with him deeper. And as we do that, we get to experience a different kind of living. This is why Jesus was constantly retreating to lonely places. Because he was always about being with his father. He was always about his father's business. And so we look for truth in loneliness. And then we look for misplaced priorities in loneliness. We look for misplaced priorities. I've discovered personally in this season that sometimes loneliness is a head-on encounter with my misplaced priorities. I think too often we attribute loneliness to weather or stress and we try to shake it off, right? Like, I just need a good dinner or a night out with my friends or turn on some sports, scroll through my Instagram, whatever it might be. But now that so many other things have been stripped away from us, I have a feeling that many of us are becoming more acutely aware of our need for something more. 
You see, Jesus was able to embrace loneliness and lonely places so well because he never had misplaced priorities. We see this even when Jesus was young. Like I said, he's all about his father's business. His parents were worried about where he was, and there was Jesus spending time in the presence of his true father. We see this take place in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Jesus asks his parents, why were you searching for me? Jesus asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Blaise Pascal, a French theologian and mathematician, writes this. All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. And now Blaise Pascal, he thought that we fear alone time because we fear the silence of existence. And I know I can relate to this. We dread boredom and so we avoid it with aimless distraction, right? We wind up running from the problems of our emotions into the many misplaced priorities of our minds. You see, for some of us, it's relationships, right? Single people, we want to be married. Married people, we want to be, have better marriages. Childless marriages want children. Parents want happier, more successful children. Empty nesters want grandchildren. And the list goes on and on and on. For others, maybe it's about accomplishment. We want more work, or maybe we want to be more important at work, or maybe we want to do more important work. And these are just a few basic examples of our misplaced priorities. And you see, there's nothing wrong with these things. We're actually hardwired for them. They're good things. But when we live for them alone, we are sure to end up feeling alone. When we live for them alone, we're sure to end up feeling alone, desperate for something more. But desperation leads to attention. You see, God speaks to us in whispers. So to hear him, we have to rid ourselves of the other noises. And in his infinite grace and mercy for us, Jesus calls us into the lonely places to realign our priorities in love. Loneliness isn't a derailing, but rather a gentle redirecting, a pointing out of the idols that we may have created without even realizing it. Our jobs, our families, our entertainment, our food, whatever it might be for you. David in Psalms writes this, Psalm 34, verses 5 through 6, he says this, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all of my fears those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all of my troubles. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord saved me from all of my troubles. David continues in Psalm 16, verse 5, to say, Lord, you alone are my portion in my cup. You make my lot secure. See, it's in these moments, these feelings of loneliness, isolation, that we have the opportunity to cling to God. Because we have the opportunity to cling to God most tightly and to get to know him most deeply when our earthly foundations are stripped away. Often for me, loss is my best teacher. Because only then do we realize that our foundation is ultimately in Jesus alone. The loneliness has been weighing us down and we find ourselves doubting that God alone is our greatest treasure. We can be honest with him. He's a kind and loving father and a good friend. We can ask him to show us again who he truly is and to help us realign our hearts with his yet again. See, we look for truth in loneliness. We look for misplaced priorities in our loneliness. And we look for connection in loneliness. We look for connection in loneliness. So often, when I feel most trapped in loneliness... It's because I begin looking at all the ways that I'm not loved, all the ways that I feel disconnected and forgetting about all the ways that I'm truly connected. You see, my assumption can turn into self-pity that I don't have any meaningful connections. But Jesus disrupts this and reminds me that I have meaningful connections with God and with others. 
And while all, while all of us have important people in our lives that know us deeply, there is someone who knows us and loves us infinitely more than even our closest friend ever could, and it's Jesus. It's the Heavenly Father. Look at Psalm 139, verses 1 through 4 with me. Again, David, just pouring out his heart to the Lord, says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is even on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You see, God knows us completely and loves us infinitely. If we have a relationship with him, then we are never truly alone. In a world where so often we believe that people don't understand us, we need to be reminded that God always understands us. God always loves us. God is always there for us. Look at the rest of that Psalm 139 with me, starting in verse 7. David, again, crying out to the Lord, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed down in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Even there your hand will guide me. You see, sometimes it's so easy to feel like we've been forgotten by God. But David reminds us there is no place we can go to escape God's presence. God's love is always there to hold us. His presence is always with us, and he's covering our every need. Even the needs we don't know about. We are never out of his thoughts. We are never out of his presence. You are never forgotten by God, no matter what it feels like. He will not forget you. He will not forget you. He has not forgotten you. It's easy to think about the lonely places never ending. When will this season end? But I was encouraged because Jesus often retreated to these lonely places to spend time with his father, but Jesus also always returned. Jesus returned refueled so that he could minister and be with others. Jesus knew that the lonely places were important, but he also knew that the lonely places would end. Jesus encountered the father in those lonely places and would return to share with others. You see, Jesus always had a group of people to return to, to whom he had deep relationships with. Jesus models perfect relationship for us. Think about it. Even in his most vulnerable moment, the night before his death, Jesus gathered his friends for a meal. Jesus was all about relationships. See, the beauty of Christ is that Jesus gives us a place and a group to always belong to. If relationships were essential to Jesus, shouldn't they be for us as well? Simply put, we were created for relationship. Sometimes we can confuse loneliness with isolation, but isolation is not God's plan or purpose for your life. You see, loneliness isn't new, but God's disruption comes in the form of redemption, salvation from its deepest form of isolation, isolation from God and isolation from people. Salvation changes that. And we need to model the rhythms of Jesus and be reminded that God's world is really about two things, our connection with the Father and our connection with others. I know that in this season of mandated social distancing, it can be so easy to get trapped in the feelings of loneliness and isolation. But God gives us connections with him and with others. See, the church exists to combat loneliness. The church is a group of people who model the love of the Father. We need people who we know deeply and who love us fully. 
And so as we close, I just want to leave you with one question. How are you connecting with the Father in this season of loneliness, and how are you connecting with others? Don't go anywhere, because we want to help equip you to connect with others, even in this social distancing. So watch this. So we just heard Devin speak about loneliness in this season that we're living in, and this is our small group. And so there are nine couples represented, and this is how we are interacting. Um, you know, each week it may look slightly different. Um, we meet guys and girls separately, but, um, and we also are trying to incorporate our families. So this is kind of our normal small group. We want to make sure that we are still having that connection with families that we do life with every day. And um, so you're kind of getting a glimpse as to what our small group looks like right now. Um, this week, Devin spoke about loneliness and how that loneliness impacts our daily life. And for some of us, it looks different, right? So for extroverts, loneliness may look a little bit different. And for introverts, loneliness, I mean, they may have a different experience. So I guess for you guys, for the extroverts in the group, what has loneliness looked like or have you, have you experienced that? Well, I have to say, so I'm used to teaching at least three hours a day, you know, 15 hours a week in front of 50 plus students. And now I'm in a house full of boys, a three-year-old, a three-month-old, and a husband. And this is all I see all day. I see the same three faces all day. And um, so I'm not going to lie, it's kind of been a struggle to, to go from so many people to no people. No. So this is why I'm thankful for, for Zoom and for GroupMe and for Marco Polo, um, because it's been a way to kind of keep connected so that I can keep, uh, keep my sanity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, whoever would have thought we have, you know, I have a six-year-old. I mean, Jace was having a Zoom meeting with his schoolmates, you know, so it's, it's just odd to see how things have changed. Yeah, my three-year-old. Justin, I got a question. Who, who all on our small group is an extrovert versus an introvert? Yeah, raise your hand if you're an extrovert. I'm an extrovert. Raise your hand if you're an introvert. <laughs> and there's not. <laughs> raise your hand if you're an ambivert. I'm not only okay, an extrovert. So but I'm also an Enneagram type one. So I'm just here at home making these lists and nobody cares about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about like our introvert ambivert? What about those of us that kind of fall in that category? How have you experienced loneliness or have you? How has that looked for you? I don't know, I think for me, it's, I, I kind of fall right in the middle and you know, I think it's, it's a good balance. Zoom keeps me company, but also gets a nice time to myself. So. You know, less time crammed on a plane with people, which is really nice. Um, mm -hmm. but, but certainly, you know, times of loneliness. But I think it's been it's been nice to balance and, and connect with you all at times. I think I can relate to that too. I mean, I've pretty much been put in a home office for the past three weeks, and most likely the next three weeks. And I've kind of found that I sort of thrive in that environment. But that that partial extrovert in me really misses the you know connectivity with people. And now I notice whenever I, I do get out, and even if it's a small interaction, I mean, I, it, it really makes an impact on my day and, and makes an impact on how I want to, you know, hang out and talk to people as well. So, yeah. yeah, we went on a walk this evening and we talked to one of our neighbors and we both said as soon as we left, we're like, we're both really happy right now just from talking to somebody. <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle too. So I see the, like the extroverted side of me misses seeing my friends and my family so much like in the flesh, but the introverted side of me week one was like, kind of like you Evan, like so kind of happy, like plans are canceled. This is awesome. But over time as an introvert, and I don't know if this is as much loneliness as it is like, as the introverted side of me kind of needs quiet to recharge. And so being with the kid, all day feeling like you don't get that um has been kind of interesting yeah. and it's i've almost towed up to the line a little bit with maybe even some self-pity um mm -hmm. and just like somebody see that i need some time to myself kind of thing so um that's kind of been an interesting <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know so 
But I, th I think the the other thing that Devin spoke about um, is is this whole thing around like priorities and try to understand what our priorities are. And I had a mentor um, that once told me that in life you're guided by priorities and pressures. You better know what your priorities are. And so for some of us, the priorities in life have somewhat vanished, right? I'm going to get to the office 30 minutes early. I'm going to stay 30 minutes late. I'm going to have my kids involved in every single activity I possibly can because that's what I think a good mom or dad should do. And, and some people's priorities have vastly changed, right? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pick up the extra ship. I don't know where I'm gonna pay my mortgage. So with our priorities shifting right now, uh, or our pressure shifting right now, have you identified our priority or something that needs to be a priority now? And that also will be a priority as we kind of go into re-entry back to normal life once this whole thing is behind us. And I, I know for me, the one thing that is that um, I would say is a priority that I've realized in my life is just being present as a father. Um, you know, we or I need time to decompress when I come home and you're kind of half there, half away with your kids because things are pulling at you. And right now, a lot of things in our life, they, I don't have that. Pool. And so how do I how do I be 100 percent focused on my kids when I'm around them? And, and that's something that I want to be a priority both now and also as we kind of go back into like normal life. Yeah, I would say for for me, it's been just um, contentment because we're so used to going and doing and filling in, you know, our board moments with activities and just running and gunning all the time. So you've kind of been forced or I've been forced into finding that contentment just with being home. And that's, um, it's been, it's been good. And I, I want to, you know, carry that through even when we can get back to, you know, running and gunning like we, like we usually do. I think uh, it's kind of been interesting to say like pressures have gone away or priorities have shifted because a lot of things now that like, like with, with my job, like, the pressure has changed and almost has intensified because decisions sure. being made for like students or like our after school program or Jen with, you know, with Kendall, like the pressure almost seems higher and it's been a little bit more, I think, difficult to work from home in that environment um, sure. mm -hmm. to, to just manage that and to figure out what priorities um, need to happen because it's almost, almost harder to balance it all, I guess. Um, but like, like what you were saying earlier, like the priority of spending time with kids has been, um, one that's been awesome, but also like really difficult because it's almost like being able to enter into work at any time now right. that I have to work from home puts a weird strain to where normally like I'm a, I get home from work and I box it off. I'm done. But now yeah. like you just have to find like an hour here or an hour there. And since we're both working, I have to figure out like how to even balance that whole day from like sun up to sundown of are we getting the stuff we need done so that's been interesting to figure out how to balance almost this has been harder to work definitely i think one thing for for me as far as priorities that's changed is i think um like we all want what's best for our families and i think we all try to to balance like mom life, work life, husband life, family life. And I think even good things keep us busy. But one thing I've noticed just personally is like being still in front of patients and still working full time is I've really like taken the view off of what my family needs and the needs of our community because there are so many people that are really struggling. I mean, like with anxiety and seclusion and and financial stress, um, including people that we work with and come to work every day and are just, you know, making, barely making ends meet. Um, and I think seeing that and just realizing that one, we're very blessed. Um, and two, like, I'm so thankful that we have community and that we have all of you to stay in touch with and pray for. And there's so many people that don't have that. And I think like the urgency of something so severe kind of puts that in front of my work every day that like, hey, I can reach these people. Like I can talk to them through a phone or through a computer when they're stuck at home talking to nobody else on the verge of 
depression or whatever the case may be and and that that like priority of the urgency I guess of trying to like at least plant a seed of like there's hope um as just completely like wasn't there and now it's there for me and so that's something that kind of took off of my family and put more of a community aspect of the whole situation of what we're going through right now so that's good that's really that's good, really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you do realize that as a believer through this and a believer that are surrounded by believers that are friends we do life with, that you do have hope. And, and not just hope because you're worried about getting sick, but hope that you're worried about financial stresses or things are going on in your office or things with your family, the, the hope that we have in Christ, but also the hope that we have that we have relationships that we can shoot each other texts that we're there. And I think that's really important for us. And I know that's why Lindsay and I are really you know, blessed to have you guys in our group. And because we know that we do have people that we do life with that understand us, that when things get crazy, there is some sense of normalcy with, with you guys and your family. So it's been awesome. Um, so with all this, I, I guess, you know, the, the, as we kind of close this out, how have you been experiencing God in this time of loneliness? So talk about, you know, how have you seen Christ or experienced Christ in your day-to-day -day life? I think for us just in our family right like you have that little bit of extra time and you know in this in this kind of area of loneliness i know we tend to we tend to turn to god in these negative moments so much more than in the kind of the positive glow of, of life and so it's just taking that the kind of environment here and then the extra time that we've had we've tried to focus that on a connectivity together in the word and then also you know dedicating those you know, those few minutes with the family, you know, even with small kids to making sure that's part of our routine or we're following some of the churches, uh, you know, the stuff that they've sent home with us um, mm -hmm. in the packages that we got as well. And just making sure we're incorporating that because once again, we go back to running and gun. And as Matt said, that has to be foundational for the future because that's, that's really what we need to be doing every day. And so you almost see some of these things as the blessings God is giving us to refocus, you know, our timing with him, with our family. And then once again, we, hopefully we learn from that and keep that as part of our normal routine. Yeah. I think in like a really simple way um, that we've experienced God recently is just through his creation, because I feel like when you're so busy and you're, you're going all the time and you're running here and there, you don't really stop and think about <laughs> our world and what God created and how beautiful it is and how he wants us to delight in that and delight in him through that. And so, you know, being able to be locked in your house and then being able to be able to get outside and say like, Hey, we can actually go outside. We can go for a walk. We can see these things. Even today, I was just so much more thankful for the fresh air. I was more thankful for the trees. I was noticing the birds, you know, all these things that, maybe in our everyday busy lives when this isn't going on we kind of take for granted so yeah. that's a really small way to experience god and then lastly i think you know how are you guys experiencing community both I and mean, i think this is an example of how we as a small group experience community I, mean, I know the guys have had a zoom call or two the girls have met but how are you in your own personal life you know making sure you're staying connected with with the people that you love I think, I think yeah, a lot of Zoom and, um, and uh, in our case, and, and probably all of our cases, trying to train a toddler to participate effectively in, in Zoom uh, yes. with grandparents is, is a challenge. Thank you for the button to mute him when they <laughs> change <him. laughs> Amen. I, just, I, I think it's just so fortunate to have, have a communication like that. And then I think, you know, Matt, you mentioned seeing your neighbors. It's been really cool for us. I think we've interacted more with the folks like on our couple of blocks mm -hmm. than we ever had because we're all home. And um, that's been really nice. I think we've built stronger relationships with our neighbors than we had before this all started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we also, we have a heightened awareness now. We're, we're, we've become a lot more sensitive to other people's needs. Like I, you know, when this kind of all started, my mind kind of went to, you know, people that just had needs around us or people that were alone in their homes where other times they may not have given thought to that. Kind of to Megan's point, 
um, you know, this, this virus has leveled us all, you know, and so um, it's been, it's, it's kind of guided us to be looking outside of ourselves more, um, checking in with, I've checked in with friends I haven't talked to in a long time, um, more recently than um, outside of the circumstances. All right, last question. Best quarantine with my kids or my spouse? Best story? Got some good ones. <laughs> Actually, um, uh, kids trained our son during this time, so um, it's the quarantine to get that done. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Doing Amanda, we also potty trained our three year old. Good time. Oh, oh yeah. Dear. We're still working on potty training. We're not there yet. We got a puppy. Puppy dog. Corona dog, as everyone's calling it. But literally, I don't think my kids will ever wear jeans again. I mean, they're just this pajama bottoms, or <laughs> ever going to get them. We're never going to get them in real clothes again. Has We've been running from the neighborhood in our pajamas. Has anybody attempted an at-home haircut yet? You have there's some good looking. There's some good looking guys oh. on here, so I think so. Yeah, what I saw. Yeah. I've, I've cut good everyone's time. hair on the dog, but my own. Okay. Uh, Tyler, Tyler cut my hair. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, Tyler. It's it. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh. We do have uh, kind of a cool story about Braley um, that just happened. Just happened today. Um, we're not really sure like what all went on or how much she understands, but she woke up this morning and was talking to Matt really just asked Jesus into her heart and I'm going to cry. Um, oh Don't cry. Me. I know. Um, all over donuts. She, she told me after donuts that we, we said our prayer and then she finished with Hey, Dad, I, I asked Jesus into my heart last night. And, you know, I don't know how much she understands. She's a five-year-old, but just the fact that she understands that she needs Jesus was a real big thing to us, and we're super excited for it. And she asked me if I could baptize her in the bathtub. <laughs> yes. Did you do it? I said no. No. we got to do it at church. That's awesome, guys. That's, that's that a really big awesome. thing. Yeah. I love it. What a example of what community looks like in this COVID-19 day. It's not perfect. There's delays. It's choppy. You speak over each other. But you know what? You make the best of what you got. I love hearing the stories, the families doing life on life in the Zoom rooms of, of our world. And that's exciting. Potty training your kids is exciting and worthy of celebrating with other people who are potty training their kids. But did you hear Megan and Matt at the end? One of the greatest stories in there is their daughter, Braley, praying to receive Christ. Listen, COVID-19 may be at work, but give some hands of shout in your comment section right now to say, praise the Lord for the work that he's doing in the Bush family. And I know he's doing work in your family. As you heard Devin share today about uh, the whole idea of connecting with God and connecting with others in this time of of COVID-19. Let's do that. We have 19 groups. Listen, 19 groups. Some are just now forming. Others have been going for a while. We've got men's groups and women's groups and couples groups and divorce recovery groups and, and also blended family groups and young groups and not as young groups that are meeting and that are inviting you in. And we have a way really easily for you to connect right now in the comments section. You should see a link on how you can become a part of a group. You say, I don't know anybody. I don't, listen, we're all being leveled out here. As Lindsay said, Everyone's on the same plane. We're all trying to connect and make sense in this day and age. So please 
let us help you connect and not go through this season alone. So listen, there's opportunities for you to connect with your family. There's opportunities for you to connect in Zoom or Google Hangout or Facebook groups with people to stay connected. In fact, if you grabbed one of our hope boxes last week, you picked up in there some communication cards. These are just simple questions and Bible uh, verses that you can read and discuss with your family. In fact, you can do this anytime with your family. That all Every week there's two questions or there's two cards, a front and a back, that during this disruption series that will help keep the conversation going. So so you can have hope in the midst of this disruption that we're dealing with. And so you can do this as your group together. This is the curriculum. You can do it as a family, however that works out for you. Listen, I know some of you all got the Hope Gardens last week. You've planted your Hope Garden. You're even seeing the fruit of your Hope Garden come to life. We want to see those photos. If you did not get a Hope Box, Right now, in front of Grace Point Church, there is a few. Bo- there are a few boxes left. Feel free to drive by when you drop off your snack packs, or even before you drop off your snack packs, and pick up one of our hope boxes. They're there for you. Go plant your garden and watch it grow. But when you do. Be sure and post the photo online, connect it in the Grace Point family by simply putting the hashtag uh, or at at sign Grace Point NWA. And so that will help connect us all together and to see what God's doing in your family. I know that there's a lot on here today and maybe your kids are squirming or maybe just now waking up. Uh, If you're watching this live on Facebook or you're watching it on demand afterwards, your kids have opportunities for spiritual development and growth. We've got incredible content that our pastors have put together for your children. All you have to do is type in your uh, search engine, gracepointchurch.net forward slash kids church, and it's there for you. So there we have it today for, for our Facebook live worship. But listen, next week, In our disruption series, I'm going to be sharing a message about anxiety. And in Psalm 55, if you want to get a head start on it, I'm going to be reading from Psalm 55 when David himself was dealing with anxiety. How is it in this season that we're, disruption that we're in, how is it that I can navigate a world with anxiety. We're going to unpack that next week. Hopefully you'll join us. Until then, Grace Point Church, live sent. Nothing lost between